the EMU Pipeline. This video is to help you set up your pipeline units in broadcast mode. We'll look at broadcast mode operation in six different sections. Settings, connections for inputs and outputs, power on and charging, linking pipelines together, the volume controls, and all the LED indications. There are four switches on the back of the pipeline which you need to configure. Switch 1 sets the pipeline channel. The pipeline can operate on one of three wireless channels. It does not matter which channel you choose as long as all pipeline units in your broadcast network are on the same channel. On all of your units in this broadcast network, choose either channel 1, the top, 2, the middle, or 3, the bottom. If you are working in an area with other wireless networks which happen to disrupt your pipeline operation, simply choose a different channel on the pipelines. Switch 2 chooses between broadcast or paired mode. We are going to use broadcast mode, so on both pipeline units, set switch 2 to the bottom setting. If you want to transmit between only two pipeline units, you should use paired mode. For this, you should look at the paired mode video instead. Switch 3 chooses whether a pipeline unit is a transmitter or a receiver. On the transmitter unit, take switch 3 and set it to the top. This marks this unit as the transmitter. On all of the receiver units, take switch 3 and set it to the bottom. This marks these units as the receivers. Switch 4 chooses between analog and digital operation. To set your transmitter unit to analog, take switch 4 and set it to the top setting. To set the transmitter unit to digital, take switch 4 and set it to the bottom. All of your receivers are set the same way. Choose the top setting for analog output and the bottom setting for digital output. Note that a pipeline network is fully flexible. The transmitter and all of the receiver units can be set in different modes. So you can transmit from analog and output in digital, or you can transmit from digital and output in analog. Or in a broadcast network as here, you can transmit in either analog or digital and output in different formats on different receiver units. When your receiver is in analog mode, you have one extra choice. You can set the digital analog switch 4 in the middle position. This puts pipeline in analog output mode, but also engages a limiter to minimize clipping. Now we have a look at the options for connecting audio to and from pipeline. On each pipeline, you have three sockets on the back to use for audio input and output, a 3.5mm stereo socket and two RCA sockets. On the transmitter unit in analog mode, you can use the 3.5mm stereo socket as a stereo analog input, or you can use the RCA jacks as left and right analog inputs. The analog input and transmission is always stereo, so if you are using a mono source, be sure to use both RCA jacks and an adapter or a Y cable. Transmitting in digital mode, you can use either one of the RCA sockets as an SPDIF input. Be sure to use a proper digital SPDIF cable. Also, the SPDIF input is 48K only, so make sure your digital source is running at 48K. On each receiving unit in analog mode, you can use the two RCA sockets as left and right line outputs, or you can use the 3.5mm stereo socket as a stereo line output. This socket is also powerful enough to directly drive headphones, allowing you to use the pipeline as a remote, wireless headphone or in-ear monitoring system. Receiving in digital mode, you can use either one of the RCA sockets as an SPDIF output. The SPDIF output is 48K only, so ensure that your output device you connect to the pipeline is set to receive 48K. Powering on and charging your pipelines. Switch on your pipeline units using the power button on the front. If you need to charge the pipeline, you'll see the LED flashing red and white on the front. You can charge the pipeline by plugging in the power transformer supplied. A red LED indicates that the battery is charging. When you are charging and there's no LED on the front panel, this indicates that the battery is completely charged. There's a fuller guide to the LED indications later in this video. Now that your pipelines are configured properly and charged, 
it's time to connect them. Often, when you switch on all of your pipeline units, they will automatically link with each other. If this does not happen, then here is the process for linking manually. Turn on your first receiving unit and press the connect button on the back of the receiver. In broadcast mode, the link LED flashes as it searches for a transmitter to pair with. Now, turn on the transmitter unit and press the connect button on the back of the transmitter. The link LED on the back of the receiver flashes and then lights up solid green when pairing with the transmitter is successful. To add an additional receiver to your network, turn on the power to the additional receiver. Press the connect button on the back of the additional receiver and then, while the receiver's link LED is flashing, press the connect button on the back of the transmitter again. The additional receiver's link LED should light up solid green and it is then also linked to the transmitter. You can then continue to add receivers. The most simple broadcast network is one transmitter and two receivers, but it is possible to add more receivers if you like. Once a transmitter and its receivers have been successfully paired, they will be linked together automatically when they're subsequently turned on. If a transmitter and its receivers fail to pair, simply reset them by pressing and holding the receiver's connect buttons for 5 seconds. On the front of the pipeline, you will find the volume controls. On the receiving units, the volume buttons work as an up and down volume control. You can also use the mute button to mute the output. When you mute one of the receiver's outputs in digital mode, that pipeline will not transmit SPDIF sync. When you mute the output in analog mode, you will see the red LED flashing on the front panel to show you the pipeline is muted. Here is a full list of what all the LED signals mean. Firstly, the small LED on the front panel. When this LED is solid white, it means the pipeline is paired and ready for use. Flashing white means there is no pipeline sync or the pipeline units are out of range. Flashing red and white means the battery is low and you should recharge. Solid red means the battery is charging. When charging and the LED goes out completely, this means the pipeline is fully charged. Flashing red means the pipeline is muted. The emu light on the front panel will flash rapidly for 2 seconds if you ever use the reset function described in the linking pipeline section of this video. Apart from this, you should see the normal blue LED at all times the pipeline is switched on. The link LED on the back panel shows solid green when the pipelines are connected. Flashing green means there is no connection or the units are currently connecting. Rapid flashing green means the dip switches are not correctly positioned. You should check all of the settings again.